Sunday with Ola and pigs by the door. Hey, Sunday with Ola. What is up? Baby, don't hurt me no more. Hello, and welcome to Sunday with Ola 154. <laughs> my dog, she just wants to get out of here. Let's just say Pix is not my biggest fan when it comes to the riffs. That's for sure. Also, if you're wondering why my voice is a little bit different today, it's because it is a little bit different today. It's, uh, I have a so somewhat of a cold in my throat. But that's not gonna stop us from enjoying our Sunday with Ola 154. My friends, we have so much to talk about today. There's a lot to celebrate. Let's start by talking about our new EU handcrafted Solar guitar right here. This is a European made new Solar AB guitar, the AB6H. And the name for this particular guitar is Svart. What is Svart? that is black in Swedish, my friends. Look at this, it's a completely blacked out guitar. The headstock logo is blacked out as well. I don't know if you can see it, but it's basically like the Sola logo is etched down in the freaking headstock and it's black and the inlay is black. Everything's just so incredibly black. Look at this. This guitar is one of our first European standard series guitars where, you know, it's not necessarily all about the looks and the incredibly high specs. This is a standard, but made in Europe. And it's going to be 1,990, including a case and a certificate of authenticity from solarguitars.com. Take a look at that. But that's not all the news for today. Maybe you saw this past Friday that there's a new Chug album coming along. What? The Chug Project Volume 2 has been announced and I announced it this past Friday with a new single, Live In You. And the Chug Project is due out October 25. And you know, it's just a continuation of all the riffing. And actually, I might have snuck in a couple of guitar solos in there as well. I just can't help it, man. Sometimes you just gotta go meatly me. So, you know, a little bit more soloing than on the, uh, the first album. Anyways, it will be out on Spotify and all platforms on October 25th, but you can already pre-order all the Ultimate Editions and all that from OlaEnglandShop.com. And uh, this is the t-shirt and maybe you saw the design already and all that. It's f***ing sick. It's still made by Costin, you know, who makes most of my designs for my solo albums and the Chug Project. And stay tuned for every coming Friday, there will be one more song being added. And I really hope that it, the single is actually up on Spotify this time. Uh, I'm not so sure. But I really hope so. Anyways, I'll link it everywhere so you can go check it out yourself. And uh, incredibly excited about this new Chug Project Volume 2. I'm gonna try and keep the tempo up for the Chug Project, uh, seeing that it will be released a little bit here and there. Yeah, man, incredibly exciting. And I can't wait to hear from you guys what you think about the album when it's out. And you're probably gonna hear me talk about this a lot in the upcoming Sunday with Ola. So I'm terribly sorry for that. Look at this though. I did prepare the Edelchrome before I started recording. That's a win in my book. The news. The fate of Dean Guitars hangs in balance as Armadillo faces demands to surrender all equipment and inventory inside the succession-esque drama determining the future of the USA guitar brand. It seems that Armadillo Express went to a bank in 2020 and uh, took a loan 
basically. And they put, you know, the brand and the inventory and all of that as a liability uh, for this loan. And since December last year, they just uh, stopped paying. And since then, obviously the banks want their money and now there's lawsuits. Great, huh? And this Guitar World article is actually very well done, I must say. It's basically explaining like, okay, you know, Dean Guitars is not a company, obviously. It's Armadillo Express and Concordia owning uh, the, the, the brand Dean Guitars. You know, Dean Guitars was first started by Dean Zielinski, the, uh, the guitar builder. And he sold it to uh, Armadillo Express back in the day and they've been running it since. Okay, so just so you understand. Uh, how it's all made up. And this is the former uh, CEO, Elliot Rubinson, who passed away in 2017. And then after that, his son, Evan Rubinson's uh, son, uh, took over. And now, uh, I think right now, it's uh, Elliot's uh, wife or widow that's taking care of the business right now. Even though they own a couple of banks, uh, almost $10 million, uh, that uh, business is as usual, I think. Or they're just carrying on, just like... It, like if, if it was nothing, basically. It's a whole freaking mess, <laughs> I would say. Holy shit. Obviously, a lot of the guitarists and artists have, you know, left. The, you know, we have Dave Mustaine who left for Gibson. And, you know, the, you have the uh, Dimebag estate leaving. I mean, that was that, that's a completely other lawsuit right there. Anyways, Evan Rubis and the son that's not the CEO anymore of the company is still saying that despite Armadillo's lawsuit, I strongly believe uh, Dean Guitars, Luna Guitars, uh, and D Drum, as well as their own Concordia investment partners, have a very bright future ahead. So, will someone step in and uh, pay these $10 million? I mean, it's, it's a lot of money, man. Personally, I would love to see Dean Guitars go back, you know, the, the IP of Dean Guitars go back to Dean Zelensky. Maybe he can purchase the name or something. I, I have no idea. You know, it's really a shame that all of this is happening uh, to Dean Guitars because Dean Guitars is a legendary brand, man. I mean, this is, uh, th th it's a shame. Metallica shares pro shot video of Sabbath True performance from SoFi Stadium. SoFi Stadium is a stadium in California. What caught my interest in regards to the article was the attendees of the shows. Look at this. Metallica drew nearly 80,000 fans to the SoFi Stadium August 25th at the first of the band's two shows at the venue. It was the biggest crowd in the history of the SoCal Stadium, uh, which opened in 2020. Uh, so it's not that long of a history. And then uh, draw a similar sized capacity crowd on August 27, selling more than 156,000 tickets for those two concerts. Just as a comparison, Taylor Swift's recent six night bow at uh, SoFi was attended by 420,000 ticket holders with 70,000 plus in attendance each time. Uh, which is lower, I guess. But since she had more dates, I mean, it's hard, it's hard to tell. Everyone's saying metal is dead. No, no, metal is healthy as right here. That's what I wanted to say. Let Metallica demonetize my video, but take a look at this, man. Metal is not dead. Thank you for Metallica, man. Just saying. Chad Kruger of Nickelback is absolutely sick of your bullshit. <laughs> I'm reading this from Metal Injection. Let's get one thing straight. For more than 20 years, it's been insanely easy to make fun of Nickelback. From the How You Remind Me days to now, their particular brand of butt rock just lent itself perfectly to getting mercilessly dunked on. But no more. Nickelback are trying to turn a page and frontman Chad Kruger is sick of your collective shit. He said in a recent interview that he'll walk out of any interview where he asked for the bazillionth time about how much people hate his band. While grabbing the interview's recorder, he sought to make his intentions crystal clear. If somebody stuck that thing in your face every single day and said, the whole world hates you like this, the whole world hates you, what do you have to say about that? Every single day, every day, would there be reluctance on your behalf to talk about it? Would you get pissed off? I'm over it. We made a documentary. Everybody can watch it. And now from this day forward, if anybody asks that question in the press, it's like that's the end of the interview. So if you want to end an interview, that's all you have to say. And that will be it. I can completely understand this situation. And, you know, with all the meme and the controlling culture of today, it's just so insanely easy to bash a band like Nickelback, for instance, or any bad in that matter. How can you not take offense when you hear shit like this day in and day out and day in and day out? I mean, you can have really thick skin, but at some point, you know, it's just, it's, it's just not gonna protect you. That's right, Nickelback also just released 
uh, their their uh, their documentary, and I'm extremely excited about that now. Actually, I want to see this. We try and laugh it off. You can you can laugh off about 90% of it, and some of it it hurts. The complaints about Nickelback yeah. aren't completely right. There's, I don't have to go and try and win over someone who doesn't like my band. That's there you go, perfect, man. So Makes me really to... want to watch the documentary on Nickelback. I haven't really listened that much to Nickelback. I always just remember that whenever I heard their albums, that their snares were just freaking sick. Like the the snares of all their albums have been incredible. And I remember back in the Andy Sneap forum days, I was like, how do I get that sick snare? And we were sitting there analyzing these Nickelback songs. Like that snare is amazing. But the music, I, I just I just don't have any... Uh, I obviously heard like all the classics. But other than that, all I've heard about them has been the people that have, you know, made fun of them. Did I tell you about this? I saw Chad at the Dime Bash I played a couple of years back. But I, I, I didn't dare go up to him. I, I'm a little like... I, you know, I'm not really good at walking up to artists and uh, talk to them. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not that good with that. So that, let's just end it at that. Corey Taylor opens up about his physical ailments. When I walk, I'm an... Almost in constant pain. Holy shit. In a new interview with Rockfeed, Corey Taylor once again spoke about how long he thinks Slipknot can go on given the intense physical demands of the band's live performances. I've already said that physically I maybe have five years left. Oh shit, that's not the that's not much, man. Now I have a lot of fing miles on me. It's hard for me. People don't realize this, but when I walk, I'm almost in constant pain. It's the knees, it's my feet. I have broken toe on this foot. Yeah, it's tough. I'm not as nimble as I used to be. I'm not 35 anymore. It's hard, but there are ways to do shows that don't require being that crazy now. The travel doesn't lend itself to being healthy because at that point it's not like being home. You got all your stuff. You're kind of at the mercy of what's there for you. So you're gonna eat like shit, you're gonna sleep like shit, you're gonna feel like shit, and nine times out of ten, you're gonna play like shit. We don't want that, so it's tough. Even a guy at my level, it's not always laid out catering and the best food and the best people. Sometimes it's a soggy sandwich at 12.30 in the morning and you're looking at it and go, if I put this in my body, I'm gonna throw up. I relate so much to this statement right here, especially the part about the traveling. When I'm here at home, for instance, I'm, I'm, I'm just comparing. I'm not touring that much anymore. If we play with The Haunted, it's very rare. We do festivals and flying shows and all that. And uh, I basically don't tour, but that fits me really, really good. You know, playing shows, doing tours for the fans and all of that, that's a, that, it's an amazing experience. You know, don't get me wrong about that, but it definitely wears on you. I mean, the traveling aspect, it's pretty rough, man. And for a guy like me, the routines are so incredibly important. Like, when I get up in the day, what I eat for breakfast, like my morning walks, uh, lunch, dinner, when I go to bed, that is so important for me and for my functioning that whenever you're out traveling, all of that gets cast aside and suddenly you feel like shit. Maybe it's not very rock and roll you know, to talk like this. But at the same time, you know, we're all getting older and maybe they don't want to do this forever. Just saying. So I definitely feel for Corey Taylor right here. Just to segue into another thing I saw the other day, I saw this picture of Mick Thompson right here. Check this out. This is Mick Thompson of Slipknot. I saw it and I couldn't believe it. Is that fucking Mick Thompson right there? I've seen him in person at NAMM and like, you know, at, at shows obviously. He's a big ass dude. Well, not anymore because he stopped drinking and he started to take care of himself. Look at that guy. He looks great. I can't see the comment now, but I think his wife said that uh, he's been eating a lot healthier. Uh, no dairy, you know, no red meats and shit like that. Stop drinking altogether and he's becoming healthy, man. Look at this guy. He looks happy. And especially when you're a touring guitar player, it's very important to stay healthy because otherwise you're, you're gonna, you're gonna die. You're gonna die too soon. So let's uh, celebrate being healthy. Thank you so much. That was the news. Who's up there? You won't escape that way. There you go. A little cleaner. Ha! All right, so all our testing shit. Today I'm trying something... I think I've never tried before. I never heard about it before, at least. You know, when it comes to amplifiers and amplifiers making uh, loud noises, that kind of, that's kind of like the point of an amplifier. They make loud noises. Anyway, something about amplifiers is that they also make a lot of racket when you're not playing. Like grounding humps and shit like that, they can suck absolute ass. So someone emailed me and said like, hey, we have the solution. 
it's uh, here in this box, I guess. So I'm gonna unbox it right here. Oh shit, that's a that's a very small little packet for a very big shipping box. Just saying. No, but it's a product from Morley. You know Morley that makes the Wapels for Steve I, the bad horsey and all that. It's a new product called Hum. No, <laughs> that's a good name. Get rid of ground-related hum quick and easy. And uh, th that's it, I guess. Look at that. It's a cable. <laughs> I actually had no idea that Morley was doing uh, stuff like this. They have some other audio solutions as well, like a hum exterminator, hum eliminator, line level shitter. I thought it said shitter, but it's a shifter. Take a look at this. It's basically uh, a cable. And uh, that's it. So, so it's something that you put in your amplifier between the amplifier and the power outlet. So very, very interesting. I brought out the uh, JCM 800. It sounds like this. I'm not even sure that's uh, a grounding hum. Let me just strike a chord and destroy the office for a second. <laughs> Dude, JCM 800, man. Sounds kick ass. All right. I don't really get that much hum from this, though. Now, I would imagine, you know, going up on a stage, you would experience more problems with shit like this. So, but look at that. It's becoming red. Let's plug it in. Let's see if there's a difference. But on stage, for instance, like there's uh, way more problems with this. I think there's actually a little bit less humming right now. Let me try this again, okay? Not a lot of hum, that's for sure. It's basically the same. I think I have to find a shittier outlet, to be honest. So I was thinking, maybe if I connect the amplifier uh, right next to a couple of things that usually creates problems <laughs> with electricity. One of those things are lights. Lights, uh, they can make amplifiers go fucking insane. <laughs> So, let me plug in, first without the hub, no? Into an outlet over here, see what happens. Alright, can you hear that? Let me turn on the light, see if that uh, interferes. And just for fun, let's turn on this light as well. <laughs> Okay, here we go. So, light on. The lights for this that's on the same power outlet are on. And a bunch of other cables there as well. Let me put this here. And I'll... All right. Okay, will we remember this sound right here? Probably not. Connecting the hum now? I, I have fucking no idea what I'm doing. Okay. It's the same. <laughs> I think the problem for me is that my environment is not bad in terms of ground humming. But if you go out and play live, for instance, or like rehearsal spaces, there's often times where your amplifier will just sound like absolute horseshit. That your amplifier is gonna make a ton of ton of rounding noise. And I think for that, this cable, the humno cable, would be good to have as an accessory if you're running into problems. But like for me right now, 
being the studio, I don't seem to have that problem. So yeah, pretty worthless test right here. Uh, I wish it made a difference, you know? <laughs> yeah, but in this environment, I just can't, uh, you know, replicate the problem for me to uh, make a good demo of this Humno cable right here. So I'm terribly sorry to Morley. Uh, I think the idea is very cool. I just can't test it. <laughs> uh, I would just advise going checking out other demos of this where people can actually demonstrate that it's doing something. Maybe check out uh, Morley's video because that was like night and day when you plug this shit in. Uh, with my situation, I guess I don't have any ground hum in my system and that's that's the problem right there. So I can't demo it. Anyways, great wasting your guys' time. The hum know everyone. Best commercial ever. Ola England the Swede. <laughs> Please respond to the video series where I answer your questions in the comment section. If you have a question, put it in the comment section. Right, please respond, Ola. Hello? <laughs> this is from Mohamed Nadnan, 5247. Why do you not make guitar videos for beginners? Just do it. That's a legit uh, good question. Why am I not making uh, beginner videos for uh, guitarists? And it's for the simple reason that uh, I don't think it's needed. You know what I would recommend? I would recommend uh, a website. It's called youtube.com. It's incredible to find uh, beginner guitar lessons. <laughs> no, but what I'm saying is that there's already so many other YouTubers doing beginner guitar videos. Uh, you know, I it, it's it's just not my it's just not my my thing to do. There's so many other potent guitar players out there making beginner guitar videos. And you know, let's let's keep them do that and I'll do my shit. You know, the the low effort stuff. <laughs> I mean, just because I have a guitar-related YouTube channel doesn't mean that I have to do everything that everyone else is doing. You know, I, it's already oversaturated with what everyone is doing on a guitar-related YouTube channel nowadays. I mean, everyone's doing gear demos, everyone's doing uh, reactions, everyone's doing uh, amplifier demos, and everyone's doing, uh, you know, play a song fast or... It, it's just, it, it's not needed, man. It's not needed. But thank you, it's a great question. I appreciate it, thank you. All right, my friends, that's it for Sunday with Ola for today. I uh, thoroughly hope you enjoyed uh, our session we had together, even though I'm a little, I have a little sore throat and I can definitely feel it. It's like... You know, a good session for uh, recording some vocals, maybe. Let me just quickly talk again about uh, the Chug Project Part 2 that is available uh, to pre-order from oldanglandshop.com. There's an Ultimate Edition, you know, with t-shirts, vinyls, uh, CDs, and tab books. We're also including uh, patches now, an autographed card and shit like that. There's a bunch of shit in those. Guitar pick tin and uh, stuff that's available in the Ultimate and the Guitarist bundle. The new single, Live and You, is up on Spotify. You can also check it out on YouTube. But also I want to do a shout out to my beautiful members. I have a lot of new members coming in for the past week, mainly because I've started doing live streams with, uh, you know, member content, usually on Monday. So tomorrow I have a live stream for Sunday with Ola uh, Contenders. That's on Mondays. But on Tuesday now, I'm checking out member music on, uh, on a live stream. If you have a band that want to be checked out by me, you can become a member. You can post it in the self-promotion channel on Discord and uh, we watch that together uh, every Thursday. So yeah, I think that's it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Like and subscribe and maybe I'll see you next time uh, if you like my content. If you did not, well, sad to see you leave, but goodbye. <laughs> There's always another YouTuber somewhere that's way better or more fitting for you. That's okay. That's why, why YouTube is so good. You can find your type of content and be like, hey, let's just go watch this uh, Mr. Beast guy for half a year. You know? <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great Sunday.